Hello, welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. My name is Kelsey, and today I'll be going over this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can uh, there's a link to our blog in the description on our YouTube channel, on our YouTube video. Okay, so this week's problem, of, advanced knowledge problem of the week, gives you something called Parcels Relation, and I'm a huge fan of this problem. I think it's really cool. I think it's really nice how the numbers kind of work out to make this the case, so I gave a slightly complicated problem for this, but I have uh, everything you basically need to solve it written on the board already. Okay, so start with this, and it asks you to evaluate this with Parcels Relation. I give you Parcels Relation up here. I also have already broken this down into f of t and g of t so that the notation matches what we want. Um, okay, so I guess I'll start by finding the Fourier transform of f of t, which I've decided was sine cubed of t. And that is necessary for the left part of both these sides. And I'll start by writing this. Okay, before I continue, I would like to point out that I am using this form of the Fourier transform in yellow above, uh, and along with its corresponding equations and such. So uh, if you use a different, uh, different uh, version of the Fourier transform, you are going to get different equations along the way, but when it all comes together, you're going to get the same answer because conventions always end up giving you the same answer if you do it correctly. So sine cube of t, I have this very useful identity up there, and I'm going to just go along and turn this into uh, this notation. I'm going to cube it and generally skip the gritty foiling steps. So. so when you evaluate this, I'm going to write it out. You get a bunch of e terms with exponents. You get i over 8. And that's ultimately what you'll get after you FOIL. Um, you can just take my word for it. I have checked it over. So I'm going to plug that back into this equation over here. Instead of sine cubed of t, I'm going to write that. And I'm also going to distribute this so the exponents will be multiplied together term by term. Oh, and that does look complicated. It looks messy, but I assure you it is not that bad because if you recall, uh, or if you're familiar with the Dirac delta function, you would know that these integrals, when you split them up, they make perfect Dirac delta functions with some coefficients including that. So I'm going to use the definition of the Dirac delta function to just evaluate this to a bunch of Dirac delta functions added together, and then it becomes rather nice. And the very cool thing about this is that for these Dirac delta functions, they're equal to zero in most places, except for plus or minus 1 over 2 pi, as well as plus or minus 3 over 2 pi. OK, and we have the first part that we need for this entire equation. Um, that's a very good start to it. The next step would be to evaluate uh, the Fourier transform of this part, uh, g of t. I guess it's worth mentioning that the complex conjugate of this is 1 over t cubed. However, uh, the complex conjugate of capital G, the Fourier transform of this equation, is going to have a different complex conjugate, but we'll get to that. Um, so I'm going to erase this, but I have it written down, so I'm going to bring it back when we need it. And if you were with us a few weeks ago, our advanced knowledge problem of the week uh, had to do with using Jordan's lemma and complex integration. So I'm going to use that method here. There are many ways of finding the uh, Fourier transform of 1 over t cubed. I am going to use this uh, property right here. And I am, instead of evaluating the Fourier transform of 1 over t cubed, I am going to recognize that uh, 1 over t cubed is just equal to half the second derivative of 1 over t. So I'm only going to look at 1 over t, the Fourier transform of that. I'm going to use that property, and you're going to get a really cool answer. So um, I will write down what we're looking for first. So like I said, I'm looking at 1 over t. 
Uh, we'll call it g prime of k. Prime meaning it's not uh, the g of k in the problem, but it's just something we're going to use to get there in this, in this case. OK. So uh, for this part, I'm actually going to apply residue theorem because this factor of e to the negative 2 pi i kt kind of lends itself really well to Jordan's lemma, if you remember that from our advanced knowledge problem of the week from way back when. There is one simple residue. It's a simple pull, t equals 0. We can use that. It's a very, very easy one to evaluate. I'll write it down anyway. So we look at the equation. We plug in to the top, through the bottom. We evaluate this at z is equal to 0, and we very simply get 1. So since we have a simple pole, we have half the simple pole. If you see in the contour, it's going around half the point, I like to say. This is a legal move. So that would mean this is equal to half times 2 pi i times this residue. So very simply, for k is greater than 0, important to note how the contour works. We had to split it up into 2 because you have uh, Jordan's lemma applying for differently for k is greater than 0 and k is less than 0. So actually, we will get k less than 0. The integral becomes pi i for k greater than 0. We get the integral is equal to negative pi i. The negative sign comes from the fact that the contour is going opposite the direction we want. Well, if you have an integral going from b to a, it's just negative the integral going from a to b. And we're going to use that. So I'm going to use the notation of signum because that's generally pretty easy to look at, which means our integral is simply negative pi pi signum. Okay. All right, very cool. That was for 1 over t, not quite 1 over t cubed, what we want. Easy. Plug it into what we want up there. Second derivative, so n is equal to 2, uh, plus a half because it's half of the second derivative of 1 over t, not just the second derivative of 1 over t. I am going to go ahead and do the entire thing out. So interestingly enough, 2 pi cubed i k squared signum k, uh, very simply, complex conjugate, make it negative. And that's all we need. We have all the pieces we need for this part, and everything flows along pretty smoothly from there. So putting the entire thing together, I will write this entire thing out, uh, but I will skip the part where you grind out the algebra. So recall this part comes from combining of terms from g of k and f of k, uh, big G and big F, that is. Uh, the Dirac delta functions are from uh, Fourier transform of this F, which we found earlier. And then we have the remainder from the complex conjugate of the Fourier transform of 1 over t cubed. Again, I combined the terms earlier. And this is what you have to evaluate to find the equivalent of that. Uh, it's very simple. You have, a, you have a bunch of Dirac delta functions. You take the integral of a Dirac delta function, multiply it by a function at a certain point. You get um, the value of the function at the certain point. We have narrowed it down to a few points, plus or minus 1 over 2 pi, plus or minus 3 over 2 pi. And so the equation becomes very simple. We have um, coefficient in front. I'm going to skip the algebra for the interest of time. We have done it all in the solution transcript, if you would like to look at that. And if you evaluate that, you very simply get 3 pi over 4. You can double check that in whatever way you want. And it is a very cool answer, in my opinion. I thought it was so great when you could evaluate something like that from Fourier transforms. So I was really excited to share this with you guys. So that's it Thank you for uh, this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to see more Advanced Problems of the Week or regular Problems of the Week, you can check our playlist over here. If you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can click right here. If you want to visit us on centerofmath.org, uh, there should be a link right here. And if you are on a mobile device, uh, there should be an I in the top 
corner over there. And if you click on that, it should give you the same links. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week.